Welcome to the demonstration portion of this workshop. Um, what we have here is GeneBench FX100. It's the separation and detection portion of the integrated um, DNA analysis tool. Um, this instrument comes in two parts. The bottom unit, which is essentially the power supply, computers, and the top unit over here, which consists of the laser, the detectors, the optical train, and the chip holder from which separation and detection will take place. Um, GeneBench FX Series 100 is designed for field and lab use, so it's been ruggedized to withstand shock and vibration. So now we're preparing the chip for running. Um, what you have here is a microfluidic chip. It's, it has 16 sample um, capability, analysis capability, and it has been pre-filled with sieving matrix. Um, Mark's going to start by removing the covers on the chip so that he can insert buffer and sample into the appropriate reservoirs. The buffers that we're using for separation is TTE1X, and currently Mark is inserting the buffer into the anode and the cathode wells of the separation chip. In addition to that, um, buffers also need to be inserted into the waste wells of each of the separation channels. And finally, samples, 16 of them, will be inserted one at a time into each of the sample wells on the chip. Um, for this particular run, we will be using um, four different types of samples, 90, and they will be controlled 9947A um, at different template levels. We'll also be using a Lelic ladder and a DS33 uh, matrix standard. The sam samples are prepared by mixing 2.7 microliters of PCR product with a uh, master mix consisting of sizing standard and formamide. The total lo volume that's loaded into each of the sample wells is 13 microliters. As we had discussed earlier, GeneBench FX Series 100 is the separation and detection portion of the fully integrated um, instrument. And as a result of that, um, since we are only using the separation and detection portion of this instrument, manual handling of the chip with respect to loading of the buffers and samples is required. For the fully integrated system, uh, microfluidics will be used to, to move fluids from the um, appropriate DNA processing portions, be it extraction, PCR, into each of the separation channels on the chip. There will not be any manual loading required in the fully integrated system. After loading the samples, um, electrode boards are placed on the anode side and the cathode side of the biochip. And the biochip is ready to be loaded into the instrument. Once the uh, microfluidic biochip has been 
load it with samples. It's ready for insertion into the instrument. Um, what you see here is the chip chamber of the instrument where the biochip will be inserted. Um, every single run will require a separate biochip. So while this biochip is running, another one can be, pre can be prepared with sample and ready for running. So operating software for, for GeneBench FX Series 100 um, requires you to log in um, before initiating. A password is set up and the instrument status is checked. Um, each of the controller boards is checked, the heater, the laser and the high voltage power supply. Um, the next thing that a user is required to enter is the chip ID, which is the chip with the samples that have been loaded into the chamber, the buffer batch code and the polymer batch ID. This gives you a, a way of tracking um, all these parameters related to a specific chip and also to the samples loaded on that chip. Um, the next page that you see here is the method file. And the method file consists of uh, a number of sections, all of which have been pre-selected through a recipe um, for, for running. Uh, specifically, one can select the temperature of operation, the injection conditions, the separation conditions, and also the detection conditions. In normal operation, uh, one would not adjust the method file parameters, but rather just review them to make sure that nothing has changed and move forward. Uh, GeneBench software has also allow, allows you also to uh, connect to a LIM system. And the LIM system has tracking data for samples and then also batches. Um, before loading the chip into the chamber for running, the chip ID is entered and prepared, uh, which we have done. And we're ready to move to the next step. The system from this point on will take, take control. The first thing it does is pre-electrophoresis. Uh, which essentially cleans the separation channels of unwanted ions uh, prior to loading the sample. We're at the conclusion of the pre-electrophoresis step. And at this point, the ions within the separation channels, all 16 of them, have been removed. And it, the separation channels are now ready for separating the PCR product, the sample that has been loaded into the sample wells. Um, on conclusion of pre-electrophoresis, the computer takes over and advances to the next step, um, which is lane finding. As you know, every single run requires the insertion of a different um, microfluidic biochip. Inserting the, a microfluidic biochip within the chamber requires um, that the laser and the detectors be aligned to each of the channels within the biochip. The lane finding process um, allows us to do that in an automated fashion. So for the lane finding process, the laser is scanned across all of the 16 channels of the biochip. As the laser is scanning, detection signal is picked up and through processing, the center of each lane is determined. As you can see here, the computer has performed lane finding. You can see the 16 lanes as picked up by the detectors. And also, the, the controller has indicated that lane sensing is successful. This allows us to move on to the next step, which is um, loading of the sample into the separation channel. On conclusion of the loading step, the computer takes over and starts the separation. Um, high voltage is applied across the anode and cathode of, this, of the separation channel, each of the 16 channels, and DNA that has been loaded into the separation channel now begins to, to separate down the separation channel. Um, as we had discussed in the workshop lectures yesterday, small fragments of DNA will end will have higher mobility and end up moving down the channel much faster than the larger fragments of DNA which have lower mobility. As a result of this, small fragments and large fragments will be separated 
by size and appear on the detector um, at different times. Small fragments coming out faster, appearing at shorter times, and long fragments coming out slower, appearing at longer times during the separation. This screen is the operating screen of GeneBench, um, and it captures all of the information associated with the run. In addition to this screen, data is also logged in a data file, and this data consists of the detector signals from each of the photomultiplier tubes for each of the 16 separation channels, the currents, the voltages, and as well, the temperatures and the powers. All of this data is logged so that um, it can be re reviewed at a later time for analysis. It, on the operating screen of GeneBench, um, you'll see different portions of, of um, reporting. This first portion here in graphical form is the detector signals from each of the 16 channels. Um, it's divided by channels, so in this case, we're reporting from channels 1 to 4, or lanes 1 to 4. Um, we can switch over to look at the signals from lanes 5 to 8, lanes 9 to 12, and lanes 13 to 16. Um, this portion of the, the operating window reports the power of the laser, the temperature of the chip, which is maintained very consistently through the run and the currents of the separation channels. And finally, a third box reports the runtime um, events that are taking place during the run. As you can see here, there is a timestamp, the step that it is running, the temperature and the current. And as, as the um, controller steps from step to step, each operation will get logged in this window so the user has a good idea of what is taking place. We're in the portion of the run where, um, where the primers are, are still making the primers, which are the smallest fragments of um, DNA in the PCR product, are still making their way from the cathode side of the chip down to the anode side and we expect to see primers coming out um, in a very short time. The protocol that we are running for this separation is the FAST protocol, and with this protocol, we can complete separation of 400 to 500 base pairs in 15 minutes. What you see on the operating window are the initial primers that are being detected by the system. Um, you see the primers appearing from lane 1 to 4, 5 through 8, 9 through 12, and 13 through 16. Um, for samples number 6, um, we do not see a primer because a lelic ladder has been loaded. Um, in addition to that, we do not see a primer on lane 16 because uh, size, uh, a matrix standard has also been loaded in that lane. Having 16 lanes of separation allows one to insert uh, both control samples, uh, positive controls, PCR controls, negatives, and up to um, an allelic ladders and also a large number of samples for, for simultaneous um, analysis. We're now going to scale the plot so that we can see the size standards appearing. Um, 
From this plot, what you can see are the size standards appearing following the primer and alleles starting to appear as well. The run at this point will continue in this fashion until all the alleles um, have appeared. With the FAST protocol, this run will take 15 minutes um, to achieve 500 bases of separation. From this point on, the run will continue under computer control and under the FAST protocol that we are currently using, 500 bases will be separated in 15 minutes. We are at the conclusion of the run and as you can see from the run plots, the GS500 sizing standards, the peaks for the 490 and the 500 um, size standards have appeared. Um, you see that from this run plot, the alleles have all appeared and as well the allelic ladder which we had loaded in lane 16 is also present. Uh, we scroll through the other lanes and see that the size standards have appeared and have concluded in, addi in addition to the matrix standard that we are using on lane 6. And at this point, the run will stop. The computer at this point shuts down the high voltage and um, we'll start to process the data. It collects all the data that's been, been accumulated and, in, and writes it into a data file that we can then use uh, for processing and allele calling. This concludes the run. For the second run of the workshop, we'll be performing separation with an alternate protocol. We call this the long protocol and it's essentially a protocol in which the separation voltage is reduced so that fragments will separate, take longer to separate. Uh, this protocol is being used to illustrate the differences in, in uh, protocols that can be used on the gene bench and the flexibility of adjusting protocols. Uh, what we will see during the da data analysis portion is that both the long and the fast protocol are capable of generating very high resolution single base pair um, separations. GeneBench is a ruggedized instrument and has been designed to be rugged for both lab and field use. Uh, the, the setup of the instrument essentially involves moving the top and the bottom units to the location in which you want to install. Connecting the top and bottom units involves attaching the ruggedized connectors between the top and bottom units. Three ruggedized connectors are, are used and these ruggedized connectors have been designed so that they are easy to install. Inserting the ruggedized connectors involves inserting the connector into the coupling and twisting. So that's connector number one. Connector number two. and connector number three. Tools that are required for the installation include just a screwdriver and a hex key. The instrument is now ready for operation without the need for a recalibration or um, re-optimization of the optical or electrical systems.